welcome to the next video on user interfaces. This time I am going to introduce you to palettes and boards like the one directly behind me. Both UI elements have a lot of similarities and use the same widgets, so I am going to explain them together. For starters, let's create a widget for our palette or board. Please note that I am going to use the logic provided by the Advanced Framework for Widget Interaction, which deviates from the Unreal inherent logic. You don't need to do that, however, to use widgets in the Advanced Framework. For more information on that, have a look at the video in the description. It's a version 3 tutorial, but still applies. Let's head to the designer first. As widget, I am going to create a small picture gallery that approximately looks like this. So I need a title, buttons to switch to the next image, and a sub-widget showing the image. As buttons, I am going to use the widget button arrow, which is provided by the framework. To show the image, I am using the widget image switcher, which comes already implemented with animations and other useful features. One very useful thing about the arrow button is that you can adjust dynamically the direction in which the arrow points and as well as the size over here. Now that we are set up, let's head over to the graph. First, we need to make the widget a child of the widget initial, so we can use the recursive interaction feature of the widget component. Next, we need an array of textures and an index to keep track of which texture we currently show. Now for the buttons. When pressing the right arrow button, we want to show an image of higher index. But we also want to loop upon reaching the texture with the highest index. We can ensure that using the modulo function. Now for the image switcher. It provides the function setImage, which allows us not only to update the shown image, but to determine an animation for the change and how much the change takes. As animation for our right arrow button, let's use the page right, which seems kind of perfect, and let's set the duration to 0.5 seconds. With the left arrow, we want to show images of lower indexes and loop when the index reaches zero. The modulo function alone won't help us for that. Fortunately, the advanced framework promotes a function which is named decrement int with modulo, which we can use for this purpose. Finally, we use the event construct to set the starting image. Let's review the code and not forget to override the get button containable widgets function so our widget knows which button it contains.
Now that we have a widget, let's create a board actor for it. A board is basically an actor showing a widget that you can place in the map for the player to look at and interact with. You find the BP board, which serves as a parent actor in the advanced framework core in the blueprint folder under UI and utils. To create a board for our new widget, we need a child of the BP board. Here we are, let's open it up. As you can see, we already have the board mesh and the widget component in place. That's all we need. Just add the widget as widget class in the user interfaces section and we are ready to go. As I mentioned before, I set up the widget to use the recursive widget interaction feature, so I don't need to adjust the settings of the widget component. If you opt instead for the Unreal Inherent Widget Interaction, just check the Boolean here and uncheck the Recursive Widget Interaction Boolean. Now let's have a look at what we created. As I mentioned before, we can use the same widgets for palettes. Let's have a look at that. Palettes are actors that are spawned by the radial menu to display a widget. They can also be grabbed and placed and deleted by the player. Please remember that palettes are a VR only user interface. They mainly compensate for the fact that you cannot use a HUD in VR. You find the palette actors in the blueprint folder under UI and palettes. The BP palette serves as a parent actor for all palettes. So let's create a child of it to start our own palette. Here we are, with everything set up already. We have the mesh, which actually sports an exit button that toggles the delete component and a grab component too, which allows the pawn to grab and position the palette. As in the board actor, we just need to add the widget on the widget component and select a widget interaction type. However, in contrast to the board, the palette is usually not present at the map at the start of the level. So we need to set up a radial button to use the radial menu for spawning the palette. You find the radial buttons of the advanced framework in the blueprints folder under UI and radial buttons. The BP radial button serves as parent class for all radial buttons. A child of that is the radial button palette, which gives us additional logic we need to spawn palettes. So let's create a child of this one. Here we have the basic button already set up, mesh and all. Let's add an icon first. If you need a reminder on how the radial menu and radial buttons are set up, have a look at the video in the description. And more importantly, under setting, add the palette that should be spawned. That's all here, but let's not forget to add the button to the radial menu. For that, we need to go to the VR pawn and have a look at the radial menu component. If you don't have one on your pawn, add one. The radial menu is composed of the radius buttons, which I entered here. As you can see, we already have a few. Let's just add our newly created button and head to the level to try out the palette. That's all I've got for today. Bye-bye and see you in the next video.